Hi, my name is Michael Trout. I am the creator behind the FoundUp. FoundUps are the replacement, think of them as a decentralized replacement of the centralized startup. And this is the ecosystem that's built on the open innovation framework that I spent years creating and that I'm contending is a violation or what Ethereum has done has violated my copyright on a framework that they have used to ultimately launch Ethereum. So in this video, I want to talk about that and share that and you be the judge. So what we're going to start off with is explain what this presentation is going to cover. Well, it's going to cover basically how Ethereum and OIF are similar. It's going to cover basically how Ether and FoundUp dollars are very similar and the, 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 their, their image are actually the same. Their, their idea of what Ether will be able to do and what FoundUps will be able to do. Um, it's going to talk about the FoundUps ecosystem and ultimately how in sharing this ecosystem it inspired Ethereum and more importantly something that is part of this ecosystem is open corp so what they call uh, distributive autonomous organizations as part of Ethereum so in many respects what Ethereum is and what FoundUps is are very much the same thing so you can watch this what is Ethereum presentation. My name is Stefan Thiel I'm the CCO for Ethereum my and background is in IT startups now. and development but my role at Ethereum is to bring together entrepreneurs, developers, on, and, and that's my investors contention. to build decentralized applications on our platform. So, what is Ethereum platform? Well, their, their, their goal is to ultimately create an open source, open product that's going to decentralize. What that means is removing the middlemen from the equation. There's no middleman. So let's put that in context. Well, imagine a payment system without PayPal. Imagine um, basically um, an encyclopedia system without Encyclopedia Britannica. Well, we do. We have Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a decentralized encyclopedia. So it's a good example. Imagine banks, imagine having holding your money and sharing your money securely and investing your money without the need of banks or other middlemen. These are all examples of decentralized or peer-to-peer -peer, um, fashion. Imagine a cloud without being controlled by specific entities, right? like all your data is sitting on Amazon, all your data is sitting on all these different clouds. Now, these are centralized, Google, Amazon, all of these things. They have access to your data anytime they want. Well. On the Ethereum platform, that is not the case. And what makes it really interesting is that this data and everything is going to be distributed throughout the, the web, so security. It's going to stop the NSA and the CIA or anyone looking into what you're doing. So come some of the key features is you don't need to trust people anymore with your information, right? Um, all your data and information is yours. Your money stays yours, right? It's not, you don't have to put trust in a bank. You don't have to trust it in a currency like the dollar or anything else. And, you know, everything that's yours that you create stays your, your stuff, right? So this is what I contend now is the copyright. So all of that stuff is new to Ethereum. All of the stuff, the framework, I did not know how to develop that framework as part of the Bitcoin. Now, this is what I contend is a copyright violation. Number one, like shares generates money. That's something I shared with them. Um, the idea that ideas are stock, again, that's something else I shared with them. The idea that, that basically found up dollars can become any currency, can become anything you want, right? It's some another idea I shared with them. And that ultimately, these ideas will level up and become basically entities, what they call, you know, uh, decentralized autonomous organizations, what I call open corps. So these are the four things that I contend are basically violation, not how they built it, not the idea of using Bitcoin. That's genius. Everything on those three sides is theirs. What I'm contending as a copyright violation are these four things. So. This is an image that I shared, that I completed in 2010. It was part of a presentation um, that I had on Slide Rocket. Slide Rocket now has been bought by someone and all the content. I had over, you know, over 100 slides on there, and I lost all that IP when they basically sold. A good example of losing your data, losing. 
because slide rocket was a centralized vehicle as, as, as someone bought it and someone changed it you lose it well with ethereum that's not going to be possible because your data stays yours so i could never have lost that presentation so basically an idea is level zero and let's just talk about my framework first the idea actually moves through the process the first thing is will people like it and will it passively crowdfund which i'll talk about in the future and, I've, and the next thing is, will a team develop around it? Now, understand some founders won't need teams. Um, like if I have a garden, that garden is I am the team. There's no need. Now, as that garden levels up and becomes um, a homestead, maybe I will have a team. But but as you know, so so some founders will complete without without having a team. So but if this is an Internet startup then you're going to basically have something called a soft proto which is basically think of it as, as a is a is a prototype without a back end if you understand what that means um, there's no code there's no database anything else then you're going to launch the first crowdfunding now our crowdfunding is never ending like patreon that's what got me excited about patreon and the never ending crowdfunding goes through multiple stages so the first stage is just launching well, what does that do it launches so you can hire and pay for developers to develop the soft prototype now the prototype has a back end, um, and then it's going to continue. Now you've succeeded in the camp. The, the crowdfunding campaign doesn't end; it just continues, right? And it allows you to build your minimal viable product, which is now you're going to launch. I think there's your beta, uh, your open beta, that people now all around the world can jump in and everything else until then it's all closed it's only available to patrons and finally with the success of your open beta you do your ipo or you're you're going to launch as an open corporation um and and this is what's really cool is that the net profits and capital gains from that ipo takes you back into the idea right now what funds and fuels all of this is something is is what they call ether and what i called you know, that's their fuel, right? So Ether is fuel that basically drives these applications on their network. Think of FoundUp dollars is fuel that drives the development of your FoundUp. Remember, a FoundUp is any idea that helps our planet, and ultimately, if it launches as an open corp, it is it will reinvest 80% of its net profits and capital gains launching more. Understand, 99% of FoundUps won't go there. They're going to stay as small, you know, independently owned um, initiatives. So everything starts off with the idea. Let's validate idea. Idea, and you'll notice I use the explanation mark, which means bottom up, right? It's the upside down eye. So here's what's really cool about FoundUps. There's no gatekeepers. There's no like if you if you you have to apply to Kiva to get your idea up there. You have to apply apply to Kickstarter to get your idea up there. There's no gatekeepers. Anyone can put their ideas up there as long as Ultimately, they're, you know, they help the planet. The other thing is there's no silly time uh, time limits, right, with crowdfunding or anything else. For example, I have an idea of Eduit, education using information, information technology driven by autonomous software. This idea is from 2001, and we still don't have autonomous learning, right? Why? Well, that's a good question, but not for this conversation. And here's the really exciting thing. Whereas 99% of startups fail, 99% of Foundups will validate and will succeed 99%. I'll say that again, 99%, and I'll explain why. So ultimately, these are bottom-up decentralized ideas, um, and we launch basically innovation, which is also bottled up. So validate. What does validate mean? Well, here's another diagram that I shared in 2011 with Ethereum, and pretty much everything that they claim what will be able to done with Ethereum, I can show as part of the blockchain diagram this one so here for example there's something called FX which I'm not gonna really cover but think of it as our Google algorithm it's the noodle it's the one thing Ethereum doesn't have because I really didn't share it with them that you know, that we're coding out right now it's the most important part if it, it funds everything it fuels everything um, it drives everything it's our engine uh, think of it as is our you know it's it's our um, I call it our validation valuation referral engine so but in this case if if these different things happen then ultimately what happens is validation happens and the most important one is stake and if you listen to the user case he talks about shares and ideas that that's stakes that's where that comes from in there um, and he talks about this new business model well that's what I shared with them in 2011 so 
ultimately the idea moves through a process here there's funding it's never ending as it moves up right you've got your secure you have your angel round your decentralized you know kind of ipo and your private placement is your public your private and your public right uh rounds so ultimately what what we you know um you want to think of when you in, in something that he said is investing you know, investing in your own private IPO. That's what when you support and you put in money with a founder, so that's the whole idea, is that it's going to get you to that point. So, and ultimately, as I hear, I, I have some clips here, uh, founder of dollars is our ether. Now, you'll see that I use Bitcoin originally in the main diagram, right? Um, and ultimately, it's because in 2010, I didn't want to introduce found up dollars when people didn't understand found up dollars, but they understood Bitcoin and that was there. So I used it. So the reason we'll have BTC, Bitcoin, is because this diagram is from 2010 and ultimately that's when, you know, Bitcoin was there. So what's passive crowdfunding? An idea that they shared. Well, follows, likes, shares equals found up dollars. Found up dollars is fuel for found ups. Found up dollars you'll be able to spend on anything. It's the new business model that he describes, right? It's not new. And the other thing is the idea of ideas as stakes. So basically, when you put money into an idea, you're actually converting that idea into stock, into a stock, right? Which we call a stake. So again, these are components that were shared in 2011 with one of the Ethereum founders. The whole process is going to happen on something called Play Foundups app that we're going to build not just on Ethereum but also on 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 MadeSafe and some other distributed. I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. Um, and the opportunity now is to leverage it and build it on multiple uh, baskets. So basically, Play Foundups would be available not just like on the iPhone. Think of iPhone as Ethereum, but also on MadeSafe, on um, Bit. Uh, BitShares, there's a lot of different kind of platforms developing out there that we can build play foundups on. And right now, it's an Ethereum project um, that our goal is to build it onto Ethereum, but we're waiting for them to get their platform uh, more complete. So every one of these ideas are part of a decentralized exchange, another idea shared by Ethereum. So a place to buy and trade your stakes. Remember, stakes are kind of like shares. And ultimately, as the idea levels up, you know, those, they get validation, more, I, you know, um, and these ideas ultimately, um, sorry, I had to cough there, um, keep driving. And the whole, the whole process is just think of, is a, a stock market without the, you know, the stock exchange behind it. It's all decentralized. And all of this is built and driven by FX, which is our, which I mentioned before, it's our autonomous agent that, that, will, that will, will drive everything from mining to um, the stock market to the cost of out of dollars, everything. And you'll hear them talking about this kind of decentralized exchange. Um, again, an idea I shared with them. So these ideas launch ultimately as distributive autonomous corporations, or I call peer-to-peer -peer open corporations. And ultimately, what peer-to-peer -peer corporations is the, is the driving force behind found-ups. It can't be hijacked, hijacked, right? They're self-regulating. As I described here, now they took it and they built it into the blockchain, but I said, you know what? None of these guys can change anything without these guys. And they're like, oh, yeah, we could just call this distributed autonomous organizations and build it into the blockchain and have the blockchain basically govern govern it. So, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, it's also open to anyone. So if you join the FoundUp or anything else, you get access to the corporation. If you join FoundUps.com, you know, you get access to becoming part of our organization as a, as a, as a, as a, a team member or an advisor. So it's transparent. So everything is open. Again, that's to the team and everyone who's part of it is transparent. So if you're part of the organization, if you're supporting the organization, you know, um, if you're buying the product, whatever, you get access to all of it. Now, some of the key things about P2P open corporations is that they're prohibited from lobbying and they're prohibited from political 
contributions. What this does is it autom automatically it pulls corporations from controlling our political system and it deflates their control by pulling the money away. And I believe once we launch our first, you know, million dollar open corporation and people understand that and that that exists, then they're going to demand that other or cor corporations by boycotting them follows our same model. And here's where it gets really exciting. 80 percent of the net profits that's the money that's left over that basically you think of the net profits are fueling 6.7 trillion dollars of billionaire funds right that's what their net that's where the net profit goes to a few people are redirected and launching found ups and 80 percent of the capital gains also so think of all this billion dollars there there won't be as many billionaires with found ups there will be you know multi-millionaires but there won't be billionaires. The idea of inequality and everything else, I believe, will go away. We don't need a world full of billionaires. There's, there, it's just the gluttony. It's, we just don't need it. There's no reason for it. So what we have is all this money goes back into launching more ideas. So this here is the found up blockchain it talks about how the ideas move and level up through the process and how all this is built on ethereum and every major claim that ethereum touts is basically stuff i shared with them and i believe this is a copyright violation of my work and i believe the fair thing for them to do they've raised 15 million dollars 15 million dollars with bitcoin is to fund it is to fund 500,000 a million dollars and saying listen yes you're right you inspired Ethereum. You helped complete what we're doing. And I have, I have that from it. Your idea completes our vision. Now, this is from a founder who wasn't part of Ethereum at the time, but part of some call, you know, another startup. And he took all the information that I shared with him and probably didn't share it with where he got it from with the Ethereum founders, right? The other founders. Um, and built a system around what I had, you know. So... This is the copyright violation. I can't do IP. I don't have a patent or anything else, but I believe that there's a copyright violation here. Um, and I think it's pretty obvious. I don't know. You tell me. Thanks. My name is Michael Trout. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. And... Uh...